Welcome to the Open Forum. Again, we have the wonderful opportunity to look together into this most wonderful, precious book, the Bible, and learn what God would teach us. And anything we can learn from the Bible, we know that is truth, that is absolutely wonderful and what God has provided for us. Therefore, it is very important because God uh, has written the Bible as a directive to all of mankind that we might know who we are and who God is and how we can relate, how we do relate to him and so on. Uh, this, uh, This is a a program where we really are so delighted to take your questions. Now, before we uh, take our first call tonight, let me give you an update on our project caravan that's heading across the United States toward the East Coast. Uh, Today they arrived in Charlotte, North Carolina, and they'll be there until Sunday. Incidentally, I am giving this information for two reasons. First of all, well, maybe more than that. Uh, First of all, that we can pray for them, that all may go well, and that they might be productive in really helping to warn the world that Judgment Day is coming. But also, uh, there may be those who are in the area who would like to uh, join with them, uh, join with them in the passing out uh, tracks in the very in the cities that they come to, uh, and I'm going to give the number to call, and I'll give it again after I finish uh, giving the itinerary here. Uh, that if you are interested in, uh, you can call one eight one eight hundred five four three fourteen ninety five five four three fourteen ninety five and uh, ask for extension six four eight or the Project Caravan extension. Uh, now today, uh, until Sunday, through Sunday, they will be the Lord willing in Charlotte, in North Carolina. Then from Monday through uh, Wednesday, they will be ministering and uh, and the, uh, passing out tracts and, and showing the, uh, those cities that uh, Judgment Day is almost here in Winston-Salem and Greensboro, North Carolina. And then Thursday through next Sunday, they will be in Durham and Raleigh, Raleigh, the Lord willing. And if you have any interest in wanting to be a part of that, that is to pass out tracts with them, uh, you can call 1-800-543-1495. And ask for extension 648 or for just ask for Project Caravan. And so let's be praying and let's be rejoicing that there are people all over the world who are uh, take, taking some kind of action. Billboards are going up and groups are going out, passing out tracks and every, every opportunity, every att- idea and there are people who are uh, just holding up placards at various events. And, oh, my, we're so glad that so many believers have caught the idea that this is the task of the true believer, is to follow the instructions of Ezekiel chapter 33 and Ezekiel 18 and Ezekiel 3, that we must warn the world that judgment day is almost here and 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 we can give the precise date of may 21 2011 and at the same time we can give that wonderful uh, piece of information the bible also teaches that today god is saving great many people who have never heard the gospel before at all but Thank you, and with this report, for listening to this report. And now we're going to go to our first caller on our telephone lines. Welcome to Hello? Open Forum. Hello? Yes, go ahead with your call. Uh, yes. I'd like to know, um, you say that you know the time that the Lord is coming? 
that is what God has provided from in his, in the Word of God. That was God's intention, that when we get right near the end, that in order to warn the world that Judgment Day is coming, we have to know when it is coming. And as we have been working very, very carefully for many years, uh, searching out and comparing Scripture with Scripture and so on, we have come to the conclusion with many proofs that we know that God has guided us correctly uh, to the fact that next May 21, just five, just one day less than five months from this very day, it will be Judgment Day and the God's salvation program will have come to an end that all the true believers will be raptured up to be with Christ. Okay, but what about the part in the Bible that says no man or anyone knows the hour nor the time nor the day that the Lord Jesus comes? Well, you're absolutely... Not even Jesus himself. Well, uh, the Bible teaches that, that, well, Jesus, of course, knows he is eternal God. That verse in Mark chapter 13, verse 32, is a, is a test. Uh, because it doesn't say Jesus there at all. It says neither the Son, and it's that word Son can apply to various uh, uh, people or situa or it could uh, apply to the uh, the churches. There are called the Son in a couple of places, but it uh, but Christ is eternal God, and so He has a, like the Father knows absolutely. But nevertheless. The churches were not were not allowed, nor anybody else in the world, uh, were allowed to know the time. God stipulated that, and that's why we find those verses that Christ is coming as a thief in the night, and no man knows the day or the hour. That was God's plan. God clearly teaches that. But uh, it, it, oh, the Bible also teaches that there was a lot of information given to Daniel, in the, we read about it in the book of Daniel, concerning the end of time, and it was sealed up for the end of time. And then in the book of Revelation, we read that that book has been opened, the seals have been, have been taken off, and that's in our day, and that is why now, we know the time because God has indicated also that there would come a time when we would know the time and the details of Judgment Day. And so uh, if we, anyone has been carefully studied, studying the Bible, very carefully, uh, the, uh, this is the way we discovered all this information. And, uh, and uh, we... Now uh, know that our task, our mandate, it's not even an option at all. Our mandate is we must use every means possible to warn the world that May 21 is Judgment Day and to alert okay, them to right. the fact they can still become saved if that is God's good pleasure for them. Okay, now, uh, weren't you one of the people that had warned that it was coming before and it didn't happen? Oh, excuse me. That was a prediction not made with uh, the knowledge that, that would not without any, it, there were no proofs. Uh, in 1994, that, that is a jubilee year, and, it, and there was a lot of evidence that seemed temporarily or tentatively to, to apply uh, to the end of the world, although uh, uh, I put a big question mark uh, after it. I had no proofs. I had no, nobody else did either, and uh, and uh, we and I indicated when I wrote about it or, or taught it that there was uh, it could there it might not happen. In fact, I even mentioned that 2011 might be the year, but that was done. Uh, and uh, without any proofs, without a full uh, study of the Bible at all. But now that we have had another 15 years go by, we've learned a whole lot more, a whole lot more. That is, God has opened our eyes farther and farther, and he's given us marvelous proofs so that we 
would be totally disobedient if we said it might not happen. We must declare it will happen because God has given us so much information. And if we insist that, no, he's coming as a thief in the night, uh, but I don't worry about it because I'm a child of God. God warns in First Thessalonians 5 that sudden destruction will come upon those because they're not listening to the Bible. They're only listening to what their churches have taught, and, they, and the churches have taught correctly until uh, 1988 when God was finished using the churches. I, uh, they correctly taught that no man could know the time, even though there were church people trying to predict the time from time to time. But now it's a different situation all together. It's a time when we better listen very carefully. That's why we have Family Radio provides tracks, Judgment Day tracks, a, a, a little booklet called We're Almost There that shows how this was derived from the Bible. It's not based on, on a vision or a voice or, uh, or just kind of putting some uh, numbers together in some kind of a way so that it finally fits into that program. It's all done with very, very great care. No fudging, no, uh, uh, no uh, assumptions being made. It's all based on facts coming out of the Bible. And if you're really interested, call or write Family Radio for free of charge, the little booklet, We're Almost There. That's one book okay. that will help you. Now, there's another question that arises. Okay, I go to a full Bible-believing, strict church. It is, I don't belong to a religion, okay? Uh, my pastor teaches against religion because being a Christian is a relationship between you and God. Okay, now, if you're going to turn around and say, well, I as a man know when God is going to send Christ back, uh, what proof do you have? I mean, I mean, you're not God. Only no, excuse God me, excuse me. I don't ask anybody to trust me at all. I'm only a teacher. Uh, I ask people to trust the Bible, will to direct you into the Bible. And incidentally, uh, now in this day, we know that God has finished using the churches. The churches think that they are still serving Christ. But as we have, uh, 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 as God has opened our spiritual eyes in this day, we find that God has finished using them. And uh, actually, they are sticking to their creeds and their confessions that they've had in the past and they're not they're not listening to the whole bible and that's why your pastor will violently disagree when uh, when you tell him that there's somebody saying we can know the day or the hour uh it, you have to listen to the whole bible and uh, and in fact the bible teaches that we should not be in a church because every church has the wrong uh, idea of what salvation is they uh, and uh, it's uh, it's really it's really a very serious matter that uh, this whole business and that's why if you really want to see what what uh, we're teaching uh, ask for these books and we'll be glad to send them to you we have another book that is uh, uh, about 300 pages it is that was written several years ago and uh, based completely on the Bible that teaches that God is finished with the church and we have to come out of the church because Satan is ruling there. And that's a horrible idea, but it comes right from the Bible and we do show where it comes from the Bible. But thank you for calling you. and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Thank you for taking my call. Happy holidays. I was wondering about the end of the world. You were talking about the burning of the earth and the burning of the universe. And that's in, I believe, second chapter uh, of Peter, verse 10. 
in verse 13. Second we, Peter chapter the of the earth. 3 verse 15. Yeah, Second Peter 3 verse 10. And Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. Let's look at that. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. <laughs> but the day of the Lord, that's judgment day, will come as a thief in the night. That is for all those who are not listening to the whole Bible. Christ will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. In other words, that is at the end of the day of judgment. We, when we tie that into a lot of other scriptures, it's the end of the day of judgment. The day of judgment continues for five months after it begins on May 21, 2011. And then at that time, at the end of that, God is going to destroy the whole earth and, and our solar system, everything that, uh, that we know uh, that c connects with the earth. It's all going to be burned up by fire. It's going to be annihilated and never be remembered anymore. Nothing about it will be remembered. But all the true believers had been for the, for the, the previous five months, uh, beginning on May 21, they will have all gone, been caught up to be with Christ in heaven and be ready for the new heaven and the new earth that will immediately follow the burning and the uh, annihilation of this present earth. Okay, my question is, on this subject, they're telling us that the global warming is because of carbon emissions, but it sounds like to me that the warming of the earth is already happening because of the sun, I guess, is going to burn up, a nova maybe, burning up the earth and the universe and everything all at once. And uh, that's the, uh, we're supposed to be raptured just before that happens? No, the global warning is a function of something else the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches us in several places that the earth will begin to wear out. Global warning is a, as the as population has increased and increased to its almost 7 billion people right now, uh, it is a, uh, it is taxing uh, the oceans, it's taxing the for the forests and all, and so we're uh, and it's frightening the uh, frightening all the people of the world because uh, this is their god. This is where they uh, have their trust uh, that everything might be well, and uh, and but global warming has nothing to do with the uh, with the destruction by fire. When God on that last day destroys this universe by fire. It is. It has nothing to do with global warning. It's going to be the action of God, who is who spoke, and in six days created this fantastic earth with its with its millions of life forms, and it's no task at all for God instantly to bring uh, such fire that in a, in a in a moment it's all destroyed. There's scientists that say that the global warming is also induced by the sun. If you bring out the clouds, the earth cools off. If you uh, reduce the chemtrails in the sky by having airplanes stand down like uh, September the 11th, then the sky's going blue uh, excuse, and our temperature ex rise up a few degrees. Yeah, excuse me. The scientists are simply looking at this earth from a very materialistic uh, earthly vantage point. They are not looking at it through the eyes of God. The Bible is looking at it through the eyes of God. These same scientists are saying that the earth is millions of years old and that uh, it, it all came into existence by evolution, which is completely nonsense, a complete nonsense, but that's the best they can do. Uh, the Bible gives us the uh, absolute truth. And so now they are 
Uh, they are uh, examining what exists, and they're seeing that this earth is is having troubles. It's having troubles, and the it's warming, and uh, and uh, uh, and they think they know why it is, and they're trying desperately to search for solutions. But uh, but what is really going on is that God is. Uh, is it, it's a spiritual problem. There's sin in the world, and there's a day of judgment coming very quickly now. And then uh, immediately following that day of judgment, which goes on for five months, the whole world, the sun and the moon and the stars, or, or I don't know if all the stars, but at least the sun and the moon and the uh, and our solar system and our earth will be completely consumed by fire and uh, the uh, scientists have no way of knowing anything about that unless they're carefully studying the bible and they're not doing that i'm sorry thank you have a happy holiday i believe uh, the first day of uh, first on uh, new year's day is uh, november i mean march the 4th that's nissan that's the first day of nissan that's God's uh, first day of the uh, of the new month. Is that correct? Uh, well, I, I don't know offhand. I don't know offhand. All I know is is that May 21 is the 17th day of the second month of the of the uh, biblical calendar, uh, the the biblical calendar. But uh, March 4, I have no idea what that is. That doesn't Much enter in. That doesn't enter in anything. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to Open Forum. Oh, let me turn my radio off. Yes, please. Uh, Harold, I just want to make a comment from a statement that was. Uh, uh, published over uh, international radio here about 10 years ago about the Brookings Institute, who is our federal government think tank, who did a process of uh, 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 ascertaining what would happen in a global catastrophe by a meteor or something like that. And they warned the federal government, do not warn the population of the planet uh, because of anarchy and a lot of stuff. So you won't hear anything from the federal government about the end of time. Um, I just wanted to inform you that that was broadcast over a, a major uh, radio media program about 10 years ago. So maybe somebody can find that. But that was the work of the Brookings Institute for our federal government to well, advise they... them not to warn the people. So there's another fight we're up against. I thank you for your time, Harold Camping. Well, thank, thank you, for, you for, your, that. for our Lord and uh, for the people that you are showing the truth to. Have a good evening. Well, thank you very much. You might be right. You might be right. Uh, but the, uh, whether the government wants to warn or not, the warning is going out, I'll tell you. Uh, it's going out everywhere. And But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camping. Yes. Um, I want to thank um, Family Radio for the tracks that they sent me for Christmas this year. Thank you. And here's my question. Mark um, 13. Mark 13. 24 through 26. Let's look at that. Mark 24. Excuse me, Mark 13. 13, verse 24 through 26. And another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry? I'm sorry, Mr. Camping. It's Mark 13. Oh, I'm in Matthew 13. I'm sorry. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Mark 13, verse 24. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven, uh, of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and glory. 
Now, what is your question? I would like you to comment on all of it, but my particular question is the reference to seeing the Son of Man. Um, it says they. Who is the they, and what, based upon your understanding, do you think a non saved person will see God? Yeah, and I'll well, take my answer over the, over the air. Yeah, well, you see, we, uh, we have to be careful with that word seeing. We, the Bible talks, for example, about seeing the kingdom of God and, um, uh, uh, or, or, uh, and seeing some other things that are spiritual. And, uh, and uh, we have never seen them with our naked eye at all. It simply means that as we see the evidence of, of salvation, we are be able to begin to understand the kingdom of God. Uh, in uh, Matthew 24, God gives us uh, further uh, uh, information. In verse 10, or verse 30 rather, And then shall appear the sign, and or let me start again verse, with verse 20, because it's, it's the same context. Uh, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the sun, sh sun stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now we understand that when we compare that with a lot of other scriptures. It is saying that it'll, the time will be that there's no more gospel. The gospel era has come to an end, and the uh, the sun representing Christ, that he, he is the light of the world, and the, and the moon representing the law of God. In another passage, it says the moon will be turned red. That is, it will now be, uh, uh, be uh, the law of God will be uh, uh, claiming the lives of the unsaved. In other words, it's at the beginning of the day of judgment. And then shall appear the sign. No, notice the sign. Now, the sign is not the actuality. A sign is just pointing to something of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming uh, on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So we will see the sign. We will know by what is going on, the great earthquake and so on that Christ has come, but we will not see him literally. There's no, nothing that says that. But we have to pause for this message. As a further answer to our last caller about seeing the Lord Jesus returning, and there's a lot of people who believe it's literal that we will see him, but go to John chapter 1. Jesus is talking to Nathaniel, whom he is just naming to be one of the apostles. And uh, Jesus said to him uh, in verse uh, 50, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see, he's talking now to Nathaniel, greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And so we study the Bible. When did Nathaniel see the heaven open? And there's no word about that. But spiritually he did, because this is parabolic language. It's a, uh, the sign, uh, it, it, is, or, right, it is pointing to the fact that he would see the people becoming saved. The angels are messengers. They're talking about the believers. They're ascending and descending. Curious arrangement. They're going up, and then they come down upon the Son of Man. And when we study that out, we know that when we become saved, we are, we are, our spiritual eyes are open, and, uh, and, uh, and we we are able to see God in heaven, spiritually speaking. We ascend into heaven on the Son of Man. Remember, when we're saved, we we are are uh, uh, we are seated with Christ in in glory, and then we're immediately dispatched to this earth to serve as ambassadors of Christ. 
and it's all spiritual it is not literal at all it's all spiritual that what God has in view and the same thing when the end comes every human being will see him be, uh, that is who is alive at that time because they will see all of the evidence that this has happened they're going to literally see the true the uh, the uh, uh, true believers being raptured they are going to see and feel and experience that huge earthquake that's going to throw open all the tombs they're going to see all the dead bodies and and uh, the remains of people that have died as well as the bodies of those who are killed in that first day uh, lying like manure all over the ground there's going to be all kinds of evidence that's uh, that uh, are a sign showing christ has come judgment day is here but thank you and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum welcome to open forum the number to call is 1-800-322-5385 one 5385 and shall we take our next call yes hello yes yes uh mr kevin i'm glad to get through um i live in new york city my name is bruce Ransom. Uh, I heard you made a statement at one point in time that we need to only trust the Bible. Is that correct? Uh, we should only trust the Bible. Never trust me or anybody else. Just trust the Bible. But be sure that you know what the Bible is saying. And because we can, God has written the Bible, so it's very difficult to know unless we've done unless he's opened our spiritual eyes and we've followed the instructions of, of uh, sir, uh, comparing scripture with scripture very carefully and praying constantly that God might open our eyes to truth. Right. Well, if you're saying that we're only supposed to trust the Bible and not you, why is it that you're speaking accordingly to the Bible by your calculations? Why are you, excuse me, why are you speaking? Why, why are you speaking about the end of time, uh, May 21st, uh, 2011, if you're quoting exactly what the Bible says, but you're saying not to trust you? Well, the fact is that God has given us, like, for example, when God has indicated that the there are 7,000 years between the flood of Noah's day and the uh, date of the, of the uh, end of the world. And uh, uh, we get that when we look at Second Peter chapter 3 very carefully. And now when we have worked through the Bible, and long ago we discovered that the Bible taught that, there were flood, that the flood was in 4990 B.C., and then uh, again, working with uh, the, only with the Bible, we came to the conclusion 2011 was the end of the world. And then we find, yes, they're 7,000 years apart. All of that information came right from the Bible. And uh, right. we, we are, we, and that's what we have to teach is what we have learned from the Bible. And then we, on top of it, God gives us a, uh, the biblical date when the flood waters actually began, the biblical date in Revelation chapter, or I mean in uh, G uh, Genesis chapter 7, was uh, the uh, 17th day of the second month. And then lo and behold, when we look at May 21, that the Bible has directed us to, we find that according to the biblical date of our day, it also is the 17th day. Of the second right. month. This all comes right. right out of the Bible. Right. But if, if this is such a devastating day, shouldn't Congress and presidents and other scholars all over the world should know about this drastic day coming? I mean, why are you the only man so far that we hear on radio that's talking about this uh, day, May 21st? And I'm trying to find out by other scholars or people who are just as religious as you that you are. Well, it, they, it, They're not delivering that message. Well, the problem is you're not listening carefully because people all over the world are talking about May 21, 2011. 
as the uh, the date of the judgment day. Uh, I'm not the only one who's teaching that. Thousands of people have checked the same work after, uh, of course, uh, maybe I have cut the furrow, uh, uh, done the first run through, but then as they have uh, checked this out, uh, uh, as we have uh, shared what we know with them, uh, they have found the same truth, and it's, this is being taught all over the world. All over the world, there are people who are anxious to tell others May 21 is the date. Right. Can you tell me who those people are that are delivering the same message that you are? I, I'm sorry. Who else is delivering, delivering the this message? That uh, message? That go to oh, no. go to your website. Go to your website and dial in May 21, 2011, and you'll find all kinds of names of people who have, have websites teaching the same idea. Right. But thank you for and calling and, and sharing. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to Open Forum. Hello. Yeah, well. Yes, go ahead with your call. Uh, how are you doing tonight, Mr. Campy? Very well, thank you. Uh, my question is this. Uh, you know, you got so many callers calling in, and they kind of argue with you about that they don't believe that May 21st is going to happen. Uh, I'm uh, non I really don't feel like a safe person, but I do fear that day coming and i do count every day that goes by and i do cry to god for mercy not just for me for my family but my question is if god blinded the people in sodom and in noah's days it's almost like they laughed at him when he had all that 120 years to tell him my my guess is those callers that are calling you is it where God is letting the spiritual people know that it's May 21st that's coming and not the worldly people that, because, you know what I'm saying? Well, that, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's to a high degree, but I, I, I don't know what God is revealing to anybody. Uh, I do, uh, just because somebody knows May 21 is, two, 2011 is for sure going to be, the judgment day that doesn't prove that that person is a child of god we're not the, the proof of being a child of god is uh, as the bible indicates we have an intense desire to want to do the whole will of god and we want to be we want to be faithful in everything in the bible because the child of god has been given a resurrected or a, an eternal soul in which he never will sin again and in that part of his personality he just always wants to do God's will, and that's a lot more than just knowing May 21. No, I guess my question, let me rephrase it. It's ain't the end of the world, May 21st. Wouldn't that be a God, it's a spiritual message to the spiritual people that he saves and is saving, and those who don't get it, it's, it's those a, are the ones that are spiritually are not going to get it, and they're going to be surprised when that day does come. Well, as, as a matter of fact, it's a two-pronged thing. First of all, the message is so awesome. It is so horrible, so terrible, uh, that it, and, but it is the kind of a message that is uh, slowly on and more and more rapidly going out into the world. More and more people all the time are talking about it, whether the news media wants to pick it up or the government wants to warn it or not. That's not their task. God will do the warning. But it is a, uh, a uh, putting people who have never heard the Bible, and yet God had planned to save them at some point because he made payment for their sins before he ever created the world they have to hear the word before he will save them because god set the program up in matthew or in romans chapter 10 verse 17 where he said faith and faith is a synonym for christ there faith is 
it uh, cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And when they hear about judgment day coming, they are hearing the word of God. And so uh, just by hearing that, God can uh, 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 apply that to their hearts, and so they become a child of God and fulfill God's plan for that individual. But by the same token, it is also a warning to the unsaved so that as they are entering, when they enter into the day of judgment, they will know why they are there. They will know that they have rebelled against God, uh, even though they thought they were living, living decent moral lives, as many people are today. They live very decent moral lives, and so they really uh, don't feel that they're sinning. But, but they will know that they have disobeyed God insofar as the, the, uh, 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 as, so far as the teaching that Judgment Day is here and they're not, they didn't want to listen or they even mocked God or were in denial and whatever. So really, the, the sounding forth of this warning to the world, uh, works negatively in the lives of the unsaved and positively in the lives of those that God still plans to save as he is saving a great many right today who no otherwise have, would never have heard the word of God. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Harold, you mean to say that I'm a believer for 13 years, and although I believe that May 21 is the end, but I'm not emotionally ready to leave my church right now. Are you saying that I have the same fate and destiny in hell as a non-believer who's never believed at all? Uh, well, uh, yeah. you, you see, the problem is that Mankind, and you're no different than I am or anybody else is, we are very proud of the, of the um, uh, intellectual ability that God has given us. God has given us, any human being, whatever intellectual ability they have. And, uh, and we are, uh, and we by nature are proud, are very proud, and we think we know a lot of things. And, uh, and uh, we, we don't want to give up that idea. But when we come to the Bible, it's a different matter altogether. When we come to the Bible, God says, A broken and a contrite heart I will not despise. God says, I will uh, the, uh, resist the proud and give grace to the humble. Or, and uh, in other words, if we come with any pride in our heart, if we come with the... Uh, thinking that we can figure it out uh, fine. We can figure out a lot of things if God allows us to do that. It's God who's given us that m mind to be able to do that. But he, if we are going to say we know more than what the Bible teaches, then we're in open rebellion against God. And that's uh, when, when the Bible has so much to say about the end of time, all the signs... There's all kinds of signs that point to the fact that we are, that we're right there. The gay pride movement, for example, is planned by God as a sign that we're right on the threshold of Judgment Day. The, the fact that the uh, churches have become so far from the truth are a sign that we're right near the end. Now, the increase in wickedness all over the world, fantastic increase, is a sign. The fact that the fact that Israel is back in its land and yet not uh, as a nation wanting Christ as their Savior at all is written about again and as a sign in the Bible that we're at that time. And uh, with all these signs as well as all of the arithmetic, that is all of the, the, uh, the, the language that has to do with, with the passage of time, and it all hangs together in, in a perfect way. It's not erratic in any way. It all fits perfectly. We know that God has, has made it a, 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 his plan that the mankind would know with great accuracy 
when we finally get there and now as he's given us his proofs we know that that's exactly what god had planned and uh, but mankind they will mock at it they will they will uh, just pay no attention to it they will scoff at it but that's because mankind by nature is so proud and he's so believing that he knows better than the bible but it, the only way we can approach the bible is Oh, Lord, I don't know anything. You have to teach me. I don't trust my intellect at all. I may have gotten all A's when I was in college. I, I may have been the, at the head of the class. It doesn't mean a thing if we are going to trust in that. We have to wait for God to open our eyes. But thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our... Next call, please. Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Mr. Camping? Yes. Hi. Um, I have two scripture verses I'd like you to look at. Uh, the first one is Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. There we read Second Peter chapter 3. Verse 8, But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now, what is your question? Uh, well, I know that you, from that uh, scripture verse, you were able to figure out that that related to the seven days of Noah. And I was wondering if you could look at another scripture it's Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26. Isaiah 30, verse 26. There we read. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days, in the day that Jehovah bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. wound. Now, what is your question? Okay, um, where it says, as the light of seven days, does that mean that, um, in, because it's talking about the end, talking about um, the end when um, the light of the moon, that means the law, the law will be more bright, we'll be able to understand it better, and um, does that mean as the light of seven days that we'll have more understanding because of those seven days of Second Peter chapter 3 verse 8 that we learned about? I don't. I you're 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 on the right track. I, I unquestionably, when you say that the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, namely that the moon represents the law of God, and in our day, uh, God's spiritual light is really shining. In that we, God is teaching so many of us. I, every time I do this program, I I anticipate I'm going to be learning something from somebody who calls. Uh, even when they call in objection to what is being taught, I'm still learning. And, uh, and uh, God is just revealing so many things in our day. The law is shining very, very brightly, even as the sun is to... Uh, the sun represents Christ as the light of the world. And we, we are learning so many things, way, way beyond what has ever been known before and i think this is what this is referring to now in the number seven is a number that uh, is used in many 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 instances and it is a uh, it is the uh, a, a number that signifies co a complete perfection the final uh, the, the the final finality of it it's interesting that the number seven is heavily featured and when we look at the end of the world in very is featured in various ways uh, because then everything is finally perfectly finished and and here it is that God is saying that the 
the knowledge of the Bible will come to its highest ex extent uh, during these days as we are approaching the end. But that it does not mean for a second that it has to relate to the seven days of Second Peter chapter 3. There God has, has uh, pegged that down uh, because he placed those verses in between talking about the flood of Noah's day and the destruction by the end of the world. And so it made it a very special place. All right. Well, thank you for looking at those. And also, I wanted to say, uh, I when I listen to the open forum, I learn something every day, too. <laughs> so it's just wonderful to have that program. And anyway, thank you for taking my call, and have a Merry Christmas. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to open forum. Welcome to open forum. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Brother Camping. Yes. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, would you turn your radio off? I think we that'll help. Just did. I just turned it off. Brother Camping. Yes. Uh, do you have the only truth today? And would you would you consider yourself as being today's Moses? Now, I'm not trying to be facetious or funny or anything. I'm dead serious. Do you feel you have the only truth? And are you a modern-day Moses? Now, the fact is, you know, God teaches that every true believer is a prophet. Uh, and I am a prophet, and you are a prophet if you're a true believer. Every true believer is a prophet. That is why I learn from other people as they te as they make comments or as they uh, or speak a moment about a verse. Uh, I am learning all the time, and uh, I uh, I happen perhaps to be. Uh, a little bit more knowledgeable than most, and I, someone has to first start the, the ball rolling about a thought. So someone has to start that. It doesn't start simultaneously in the minds of, of a thousand people. If someone does, and then others listen and, and check and check, and if God opens their eyes also, then they, uh, then they see the same thing, uh, very, very quickly. And, uh, and, uh, so I, I don't, I consider myself as a modern day prophet just as I look at every other true believer as a modern day prophet. And I, and I'm just, I, I consider myself just as a humble servant of the Lord and I thank Him every day. How can I be that I can serve the Lord, uh, uh, uh such a wonderful king in, be part of such a wonderful kingdom. What a blessing to be just a, a servant in that in that capacity, and that's where I am. Over the years, and I've been listening to you uh, close to twenty years. Over the years, I've heard some pretty convincing disagreements. We'll call them with. Uh, the, with your interpretations of the Bible, and I don't know, you have you have a tendency to to really shut down a disagreement uh, against what you're what you're teaching. Now, even though this program is designed for teaching, uh, I think it helps the listener to be able to hear in its entirety uh, a lot of the things that people are saying in disagreement, if for no other reason, just to hear something that they may be thinking themselves. Now, never get a chance uh, to hear. Excuse me. Now, you see what the problem is. There are many, 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 many different denominations those who are in those denominations, whether they're a pastor or a Bible teacher or just a, 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 a faithful member, they believe what their denomination teaches about any subject, what it might be. 
Yet, if you would make a catalog of all the different uh, what all the different churches believe about baptism or about uh, salvation or about uh, a lot of other subjects, the end of the world, you would find that there are multiple differences, multiple differences. Yet, in all of them, uh, are held by people who believe they're very sincere. They're very, uh, they believe they're being faithful to the Bible. And can't you see what this program would be if we would, if we would go into that mode of teaching where we're, are, you tell, tell me, what are, what do you believe about this? And then the next man comes and he's from a different denomination. And what do you believe about this? Our program would be, would end instantly. We would, uh, we would have no truth at all. And the only time that I will listen is if they cannot come from a creed or something, but they're coming from verses in the Bible. We're continuing with the Open Forum, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, hi. Um, I have been married before, and I just kind of realized that that's the sin to remarry if your spouse is still living. Is that true? And then, I mean, now what do I do? Do I get a divorce or, you know, if I know I'm sinning? The Bible teaches that if a person has been married and divorced and the previous spouse is still living, then it is a... Uh, a sinful action to marry a second yeah. time. The Bible teaches in first, for example, in First Corinthians chapter seven, verse twenty thirty nine, that the wife is bound to her husband as long by the law as long as the husband is living. And of course, that's just one more sin amongst. We all are guilty of sin. That's why we so desperately need salvation. When, if and when we become saved, truly saved, it means all these sins as well as a whole lot of other sins are completely covered by the blood of Christ and that we are safe in the arms of Jesus. But that's why uh, uh, no matter how many how many sins we can think about, and some are more ugly than others, but, oh, we can beg God for salvation because then those sins have been covered and will not send, bring death to us. Well, thank you. And thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, Brother Canton. Yes, what is your question? Yes, I had a question for you in regard to um, uh, the May 21st uh, day. Um, I realize in, from listening uh, for some time now that you've come up with that day from what you believe is careful study and the seven days spoken about in Peter and such. Um, I do know that you, you, you know, you had the prediction um, in 94 that didn't go through, but then also had the backup prediction of 2011, and, oh, well, here it is, 2011, right around the corner. You've got a lot invested in this, um, and I do know you are sincere and believe that this is the day and that you have um, uncovered it and that you have found that through what you believe is very careful study of the Word of God. Um, but I want to ask you my question is, I know there's a formulation and you have a track out and, and there's a lot that you've done to come up with this day. Can you give myself and all other listeners who, who continually ask you about this May 21st day, anywhere in Scripture, I know that Scripture you can't, there is a lot to be studied. It's not just you know, sometimes there's more than just asking for a verse. But can you, or if it's not available, let us know. But if it is available, can you tell us anywhere in the Bible, in God's Word, where the day of judgment must be known by us that it is, it's an extremely important day, but where does God specify anywhere in Scripture, even one verse where he says we must know that day? 
Well, we do yeah. know that... We all know it's the season, and the end is, is upon us, and all the signs are here. And it could be, you know, uh, from other people's point of view, before May 21st or after, but we all know it's soon that that are true believers. But where in Scripture is there any way that says we must know the day? And that's my question for you. Well, the fact is, uh, uh, number one, in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5, it does say there that there will come a time when the wise, that is, in that context, the wise or the true believer will know time and judgment. And time is a a synonym for the word hour, and uh, judgment is is, uh, the word day, uh, is uh, is talking about the day of judgment and it's in our time that we do know the time we do know a g- great many details about the day of judgment we and and more than that remember what i what we read in first thessalonians chapter 5 it's frightening i say that it's frightening every time because it is frightening uh, where god says that that uh, uh, well, let me read it because uh, so you will hear it right from the mouth of God, not from my mouth. Uh, it, we read in in uh, First Thessalonians. Uh, let me get there. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter five, where God says, uh, "For yourselves, I'm reading verse two." For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. That has been taught again and again all through the church age. For, then he says, for when they, well, who are they? The ones who know have been taught that Christ is coming as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. As a, uh, in other words, they on the one hand there uh, there are all kinds of people today who are saying, "Oh no, Christ is coming as a thief in the night." But we are, we are safe. We are ready. We we he could come at any time. Now God says, "Then sudden destruction cometh upon them." That's the language of judgment day, uh, and uh, but then he in that same context he talks about some others. Who do know, but ye, brethren, verse 4 says, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day, and are not of the night nor of darkness. And uh, that is because uh, there are those who have been continuing to study the Bible and have learned, yes, Christ would only t- tell us he's coming as a thief in the night as long as the church existed as the uh, as the uh, p- place where God was doing the saving, where Christ was ruling. But now that is r- being ruled over by Satan. And but there are those who are uh, who are becoming saved because go- the God is still working for salvation out in the world, and they are the ones who are watching. And where do we watch? In the Bible. And we receive assurance from Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5, that there will come a time when we will know. And we learn from Daniel 12 that there will come a time when we'll know a whole lot more about what God has put in the Bible. And then we learn from Revelation 5, where God teaches that that they, they, there's a book that has been sealed, but the seals are being taken off, and uh, and so on. As we have put all these things together, we be, it all fits together. And then when we have these marvelous proofs, uh, the that there are seven thousand years. A day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. Uh, and uh, what is and in in connection with the flood of Noah's day, God made a point of, of seven days and the flood waters would come, and they did come in seven days. And Noah was a preacher of righteousness, and, uh, and so let's, let's pick up the thread of Second Peter 3, a day is a thousand years. Well, okay, suppose, then suppose Noah said, 
in 7,000 years, uh, there is going to come a destruction, right? And, uh, uh, and the, the ark was a representation of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ as the place of safety, just as uh, the rapture or the Christ himself is the place of safety for the true believers in our day. Well, then we, then we wonder, well, 7,000 years, what does that mean? What does that mean? And long ago, already 35, 40 years ago, we learned from the Bible, just from the Bible, that the flood occurred in 4990 B.C. when it's coordinated with our calendar. And um, several years ago already we had learned that Judgment Day was 2011. And then when we calculate, uh, attest that a day is a thousand years, seven days, and the flood waters, the destruction is going to come. And we go from 4990 B.C., uh, which, uh, which is the date coordinated with our calendar, to 30. Uh, 2011 A.D. It's exactly 7,000 years. We don't. We drop one year because it calend in when calendars are designed uh, to our calendar designed to go into the Old Testament. There's no year zero, and so in the actual years, there's one less year than the calendar year, and so it's exactly 7,000 years. Well, there God is is has given us a fantastic proof. A wonderful proof that he has guided us. And, uh, you know, people com com uh, comment again and again, well, yeah, I know, but you remember you once said 1994. And I, I like to use this very, very homey, homey illustration. The first time anybody rode a bicycle without training wheels, did they ride it without falling? And the answer, of course not. You fell. Or uh, your daddy was right along with you to make sure when you when you were falling you wouldn't hurt yourself, but you fell. Yeah, and it, but after you kept working and practicing, pretty before long you 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 didn't fall anymore. And that's the way all in every, any idea is always starts with not a perfect idea. When people manu develop new products. They don't, they, even automobiles today, have you ever thought about it? Here are automobiles, they've been around for uh, decades and and uh, they've turned out millions of a certain kind of an automobile and yet they still turn out once in a while something that has to be recalled and doesn't work as well as it should. And so that is, that's the way of learning, that's why we're, we keep learning all the time. But uh, but the automobile itself isn't destroyed. It's just that it, that it has to be. Uh, uh, we have to learn more and more ab about how to do this more perfectly. And so it is with Bible truth. As we keep studying and keep praying for wisdom, keep comparing Scripture with Scripture, we f we learn more and more certainly. But my. When we come to 7,000 years, exactly, exactly as what is indicated in Second Peter 3, uh, a day is a thousand years and it's seven days until the uh, judgment or, or until the uh, floodwaters will hit, uh, we are awed by it, that the fact that God has guided us so wonderfully we don't deserve it. What a merciful God he is. But thank you. So the for, main scripture is the Thessalonians um, five scripture that I've heard you quote before, and so that would be, we would look to. Please forgive me; I do not have my Bible in front of me. But in that in that scripture, it states that there will be people who say peace, peace. Those would be people who are not looking for Christ's return, who are at ease with the world. Excuse me, believers would. That is Can I just finish that sentence, and then I'll, let, I'll take my answer off the air? So th those peace, peace uh, people are, in my view, and you can help me if you believe differently, but I believe that they are people who are not looking for Christ's return. And I hear you use that scripture uh, uh, in such uh, uh, a way that I do believe that, that you are an error of dividing the Word of God correctly in that area. Please don't get offended. I just want to say 
I do believe that. I do believe that peace, peace, are the people who are at ease, not looking for Christ's return, whether they're believers or not, whoever they claim to be, they're not looking every day. Every morning they get up, they know that this could be the day. True believers do think that way. Any day it could uh, be. Well, excuse me. Day. Excuse well, me. Now, you've said a lot to say, but you are quoting incorrectly. It doesn't say they are saying peace, peace. It doesn't say that at all. It's talking about people who are saying Christ is coming as a thief in the night. Uh, they are concerned about this. Every, every, earnest people in the churches, if you've ever served any length of time in a church, you will find that the doctrine of eschatology or the end of the world comes up again and again and again. Whole books have been written about that. It's not just people who are not paying attention. It's people who are convinced that Christ is coming as a thief in the night. They know the verses in Mark 13 and in Matthew 24 where Christ is come. It says Christ is coming uh, in no man knows the day or the hour. They know these things. These are not careless people. These are people who are very interested in this subject but they are, are they say uh, that that they say but uh, uh, peace and safety that is they are sure that they are at peace with god they are safe and that matches exactly with when people say but i don't worry about that because i am ready i am ready they have thought about it they have this has been a big concern to them. But I am ready. He can come tonight. He can come next week. I am ready. That matches perfectly. And you, do, you, can't, you can't tear this, these verses apart and make it say something different than what they're saying. Uh, but uh, for the, those very people, it says, sudden destruction will come upon them. It's a tremendously uh, serious passage and you it's nothing a passage we never want to treat lightly at all but shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum welcome to open forum good evening brother camping this yes. is Naresh Pali from Fresno uh, how are you sir please may I offer some verses addressing the caller before and please tell me if this is addressing the issue about the plight of the nations, uh, the hope of the believers, and the judgment on the wicked. It's on Isaiah 30, verses 27 to 33. Isaiah 30. Verses 27 to 33, brother. Let, let's look at that. Isaiah 30, verse 27 to 33. Um, behold, the name of Jehovah cometh from far, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy, his lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire, and his breath as an overflowing stream shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity, and there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. Ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart is as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of Jehovah to the mighty ones of Israel. And Jehovah shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lighting down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of a devouring fire with scattering and tempest and hailstones for through the voice of Jehovah shall the Assyrians be beaten down which smote with a rod and in every place where the ground and staff shall pass which Jehovah shall lay upon him it shall be with tabrets and harps and in the battles of shaking will be light with it for Tophet is ordained of old, yea, for the king it is prepared. He has made it deep and large, the pile thereof is fire and much wood. The breath of Jehovah, like a stream of brimstone, doth kindle it. Now, what is your question? This is, there's a lot of material here. We can't talk about everything in here. 
But what is your question? Yes, Brother Camping, especially my question is, is this addressing, Brother Camping, the uh, plight of the nations that they're going through denial that, uh, you know, Judgment Day is here, coming here, and then the hope of the believers, and then the, the judgment on the wicked, Brother Camping? Well, yes, yeah, that, is, that is essentially the uh, teaching of this. It is teaching the wrath of God, His coming. And yet, there, ye shall have a song as in the night where the holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart. There are still those who are becoming saved. That's the wonderful piece of information that we are sharing with the world. Judgment Day, May 21. But today, it is still the day of salvation. You can cry out to God, and you should be crying out for His mercy, and maybe, maybe... God will still save you as he saved some of the Ninevites when they cried to God for mercy. And thank, thank you. you. Very much. Thank you, Brother Camping. God bless you. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Brother Camping. Yes. Um, could you, I wanted you to read two um, verses and compare them. I'm, I'm sorry, could you speak right into your phone and repeat that? Comparing two verses, what two verses are they? The first one is Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Romans 8, verse 16. Let's turn to that. Romans 8, verse 16. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. We read, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that he should come, and even now already is he in the world. Now, what, what is your question? I was wondering about um, witnessing and confessing. Witnessing and confessing? Yeah, in both, both verses. If, um... Well, uh, 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 what is your question about witnessing and confessing? Now, what is your question about... Uh, I, I don't understand your question. Oh, I'm sorry, we've lost that caller. We're going to have to go to our next caller. Welcome to Open Forum. Hello? Yes, go ahead with your call. Hi. Um, thank you for um, uh, really honor um, Lord God Jesus. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, Matthew uh, 24. Uh, 32 and 33. Matthew 24, verse 32 and 33. There we read Matthew 24. We read, Now learn a parable of the tree, of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that he is near even at the doors. Now, what is your question? Um, oh, basically, uh, uh, like May, uh, that could happen in May in a day, a day of judgment. What it, it's going to be like a summer over here. Almost June. What do you think about this scripture? Well, this this uh, uh, notice it says uh, when you see the fig tree in leaf, and we know when we study that in the light of the whole Bible, when you see Israel, the nation of Israel, again becoming a nation as they did after almost two thousand years in 1948. They became a nation, and that was a tremendous sign that all these things spoken about in Matthew 24 
are now ready to happen. It was a, 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 an early sign that showed us that we're right near the end of time. And when, it, when we finally began to understand about this, uh, this fig tree, it's, uh, uh, it puts forth leaves. It is not, there's no fruit. And that's exactly what happened to the nation of Israel. They, they became a viable nation amongst the nations of the world. No spiritual fruit. They still today deny Christ as the, as their Messiah, just as they always have in the past. And, uh, so they put forth leaves. And then it says, ye know that summer is nigh. And when we study that phrase in the Bible, we find summer has to do with harvest. And that there, that there's going to be a final harvest when the when the Israel becomes a nation again. When that happened in 1948, then at some time after that, there's going to be a final harvest. And that began. We learned from a lot of other passages of the Bible that began in 1994, a jubilee year when when God uh, during, uh, began the last 6,100 days of the 23-year Great Tribulation period. And during that time, which is still uh, continuing today, it's got a, just five months to go, God is saving many, many people. We don't know who they are, but God knows who they are. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, I've been listening to this boy that talked to you, uh, coming a little around, a little good, and everything, talk, conversation. He say something about where the angel get the body from. You know, uh, basically, uh, I guess this individual uh, bound back, you know, you know, an uh, angel can smoke them, bound them back like where the bathroom was, probably where the structure of this individual is. Thank you so much for uh, answering the phone and honor Lord Jesus very much. And you're very humble. Oh, man. Oh, that's so great about you. Thank you. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Brother Campton. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yeah, I would like you to go to Second Thessalonians. Second, second Thessalonians. Chapter. Yes, the second chapter. Second Thessalonians, chapter two. Let me In its entirety. Uh, but uh, uh, what? What is your question? I want to. When you once you read it, I want you to look at it. Eleven, 11. verse eleven. Verse 11, and, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's a very awesome, a very terrible thing to know, that God is in action in blinding people at this time who do not want to listen. Oh my, I've got to say goodnight. I'm sorry. <laughs> 